everyone. I am Josue Crimson Rohano here with Dylan Exobite Mayo, and he, we are here in the top eight of the Pokemon TCG World Championships. We are actually going to feature James Good against Takuya Yaneda from Japan. Uh, James Good is from the United States, and uh, actually Takuya Yaneda is our number one ranked player uh, coming into coming into the. Uh, the top cut. All right, let's take a look at the bracket. We can talk about Takeda's in, or Takuya's incredible path that he's taken here. Uh, you can see that Takuya up in that upper left, that means he was the number one seed. He was undefeated through Swiss rounds today and qualified via the LCQ, which means he was undefeated in rounds yesterday as well. Another player who's had a grueling set of days, just like Jason. Yeah, I believe that actually makes him like 14-0 coming into, or actually 15-0 coming into this, uh, this top eight. Potentially even 16 0. Yeah, he's been winning and just has not stopped since he's gotten into the state, into the into Canada. So yeah, I, I do know that Takuya is playing a very awesome deck, like a deck that's just been performing extremely well throughout this uh, this tournament, and that's Darkrai. But he's actually uh, excuse me. Don't talk about that. Okay. Um, yeah, we are actually still not ready to begin. My apologies. They are they are resleeving the deck. So I guess uh, we get to talk a little bit more about what's been going on coming into this top eight. Well, real quick, let's talk about what's going on with the resleeving of the deck. When decks are being played on film, your average card sleeves actually have too much glare for you to be able to see what's going on, so we actually have special sleeves that we use for filming. Yes. Now, these matte sleeves, that's what they are, these matte sleeves actually uh, reduce the, re uh, the reflection and allow us to see these cards much better. All right, if we can bring that bracket up one more time, we can go over the other matches from top 16. So it looks like that uh, Johnny Rebus and Simon Narod will both c go on on the other side of that bracket. Jason Klasinski will be facing Jonathan Bristow from the U.S., and Dustin Zimmerman will be faming Rick uh, Verwall from Netherlands. Yeah, now Jason Klasinski was our featured match last time, so we do know that he is uh, obviously on a run here, and he's a two-time world champion. He is now in the top eight, make, uh, potentially about to make a third championship run. Yeah, and just like Takuya, the, he went through the LCQ, and so he's been on a massive run of wins recently. Correct. Now, there is quite a few United States players in this, uh, in this top eight, and we are here in Canada, which is close enough to the United States to assume that there would be a majority of United States players coming into this tournament. Well, and one, one thing that is uh, interesting to see, there were two Canadian players in the top cut overall. We got down to one in top 16. That was Chase Maloney, who was our senior championship, cha senior world champion last year. Looks like he made it to top 16, but was not able to proceed all the way to top eight. Yeah, Chase Maloney had an incredible run. He not only won the Senior World Championships last year, but he had a great season this year and unfortunately was stopped just short of the top eight. And it's so hard to do when you do what they call aging up. When he wins transfers from seniors to masters and suddenly you're playing against those older players in that older age bracket, it is tough. So that is a great accomplishment for Chase. Yeah, historically speaking, it's been incredibly difficult for a, for a senior to age up into the master division and it usually takes them about one year to really get the hang of how the masters work and, and really this entirely new metagame, which is basically just a really fancy word for saying what people play. That's true. Uh, a lot of times it feels like the age groups kind of lag behind each other. The masters will be the more innovative and the seniors will pick up on what they're doing and then the juniors will pick up on what they're doing. So when you move from masters to seniors, you suddenly lose, or from seniors to masters, excuse me, you suddenly use, lose that foresight of what's coming down into your games. Yeah, but Chase had no problems uh, aging up. And you know what? A lot of the new seniors play, or new, uh, new masters players, I'm sorry, have been kind of uh, doing just like Chase and They've been, they honestly just took over this season. This new generation of players really seems to make the transition a bit bit easier. So anyway, we can go to the setup of the game now. Those players are mic'd up and have their headphones on, so now we can talk about Takuya's unique deck that he's been playing. Yeah, I almost dropped the ball there and uh, maybe might have uh, talked a little bit about his deck a little bit too early. But now that he is mic'd up and so is James, I believe, will be able to really speak about what they're going to be playing and what we can expect to see out of them. Now, Takuya is playing a deck that is similar to the deck we saw last round with James, uh, with Jason Klasinski. It's still focused about Darkrai, but like we talked about how Jason had the very simplified, boiled-down Darkrai deck to go for consistency, 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 Takuya is going the complete other way. Let's talk about that. Yeah, Takuya actually chose to play a 2-2 Garbodor line inside of his uh, Darkrai deck. Now, Garbodor's ability uh, stops all abilities, all other abilities, except for its own, obviously, from really taking place. Now, you wonder, Darkrai has an extremely good ability that that people tend to um, t people tend to use the, the Dark Ride deck because of its ability, I guess is what I'm trying to say. That so, Dark Cloak ability is one of the key points of the Dark Ride deck. Correct. So that makes me wonder, really, why would he, why would he combine the two? But then I see James's deck, and you know, my answer's kind of, or my, my question's kind of answered. 
That's right. James is playing a pretty standard Blastoise Kyurem deck. Or Blastoise Keldeo deck, excuse me. Of course, has the Black Kyurem in there as well. But that deck is focused around two other key abilities, which are more key to that deck than Dark Cloak is to the Darkrai deck. Yeah, now Darkrai does tend to have a really nice matchup. It, it's, it's a very good deck. It, it's very solid. It, it plays very well throughout from the beginning of the game to the end of the game. But it, uh, its consistency really tends to not, be, not do too well against a Pokemon such as Black Kyurem EX, which can knock it out in one hit, and Darkrai can't really respond to that. So right. Blastoise tends to be a really poor matchup for really poor matchup for, for Darkrai. Right. Let's take a look at Blastoise here real quick so we can show you exactly that ability that Garbodor is in there to shut down. Yes. Now, Blastoise's ability is called Deluge. It allows you to just uh, attach as many water energies from your hand onto your, onto your Pokemon as, as often as you like. So it really speeds up the deck, and it, it allows this uh, Black Ballista from uh, Black Kyurem to come you know, consistently turn after turn. That's what the Garbodor is for. That's why... Um, Takuya said, I will, not, you know, I will not just take this really bad matchup and just hope I don't play against it. I'm going to actually have an answer for it. And, hey, go figure, he's actually playing against it right now in the top eight. So if his Garbodor does do what it, he wants it to do, he might actually just happen to move on to the top four and continue his incredible undefeated run. Right. Now, like you said, Blastoise tends to have a strong matchup versus Darkrai. But will these Garbodors be enough to shut down that Blastoise deck? We're going to find out right now as the game is underway. Oh, baby. It has begun. Now, Takuya does go first, and he attaches... He has an incredibly fast start, an incredibly strong start. He not only attaches an energy, but he also junipers away an energy. And you really can't ask for much else if you're... That's true. Yeah. Takuya's playing incredibly quick, so he's also got those two trebuches on to his bench so that he can be ready to evolve to Garbodor as soon as he pulls that up, getting ready to shut down uh, the Blastoise uh, ability as soon as... B before the Blastoise even shows up. One other small thing that uh, Garbodor shuts down is the Squirtle that most players tend to run has that Shell Shield ability, which protects it from bench damage when it's, when it's sitting on that bench, which means that Dark Spear, which normally hits bench Pokemon, Squirtle would be auto-protected against. But this even counters that aspect of the deck. Yeah, it's really, honestly, it really is a counter to, to Blastoise, and it's exactly what Darkrai needs to be able to compete against this deck. Now, both trubbishes, having both Trubbishes in play really does mean a lot. It means that even if your opponent does happen to um, get past the first Garbodor, he's now going to have to potentially get past the second one, assuming that the second Garbodor is not prized. Now, also what's really important is that he has to get the Garbodor into play before the Blastoise comes in. Otherwise, Blastoise's Deluge ability will have a turn, at least one turn, to really get as many energy into play as possible. And, you know, I mean, Black Bliss is extre extremely strong, but Keldeo EX has a pretty good attack, too, if you can manage to get enough energy on it. Yeah, that's true. Uh, James just played another end, looking for some more cards, refreshing both players' hands. I don't think that uh, Takuya had much in his hand at that point. It looked like all energy to me, so this might be helping Takuya out a bit more than James would be normally hoping. Another card we want to look at is Keldeo EX, because just like you were saying, not only does it shut down that Blastoise ability, Keldeo EX gets a bunch of damage off that ability and has its own ability that can be incredibly frustrating to play against. That's a whole lot of abilities. And luckily, the one that matters most has to, happens to be Garbodor's. So we also see a Tropical Beach in play. The Tropical Beach does help these Blastoise decks set up. Uh, it's a World's Promo card. And go, go figure, it actually happens to be a very good World's Promo card because it allows you to really continue this consistency. It's, it's a separate draw card um, and not necessarily a supporter. A great story about when Tropical Beach first came out. That card first came out at Worlds two years ago. And uh, Ross Cawthon was about the only player who decided to play it in his deck that year. Went all the way to second with it. Surprised everybody. Yeah, it literally came out what the the morning before, uh, the morning before the tournament. And in that one day period, Ross said, "No, no, no, this card is extremely good." When most people were actually considering it pretty bad. Just so you know. So, anyways, Dark Ride does come into play. A second Dark Ride does come into play. And Takuya's hand is so strong. Man, and really, he, he plays a Juniper now, gets more energies into the discard pile, and just has four energies in play already. Yeah, and he's running a, well, three and an EXP share. That's the Garbodor a, comes into play. The Garbodor does hit play before the Blastoise. That's exactly what Takuya needed. Exactly. That's going to slow that other deck. James's deck is going to be slowed way down. Oh, and a Hypnotoxic here. Just everything going Takuya's way. Well, except for that flip. Well, <laughs> you can't ask for that much, you know. So the, the Tails doesn't truly matter. Um, the, the poison's there. He's, not, he's likely not going to retreat. He doesn't even have a Blastoise in play. The Garbodor, I don't believe, has a Pokemon tool attached to it. That's true. So uh, Blastoise still has a chance if James can find a Candy and a Blastoise this turn. Yeah, so we do have to keep that in mind. The Garbodor's ability doesn't just work on its own as, as long as it's in play. No, it also needs a tool attached in order to really solidify the ability. Yeah, and James is running four Blastoise, and 
he's running for rear candy. So that is a definite option he has. He's playing the computer search. He may be going for half of that combo right now if he has the other half in hand. Yeah, I don't really have good access to his hand, so I'm not 100% sure. But I believe I see a rare candy in his hand. So the computer search would find a Blastoise, potentially. Um, or if he doesn't have a supporter, maybe a supporter. We'll, we'll have to wait and find out. He might be trying to get the Blastoise while he still can, while Garbodor isn't active. Well, the Garbotoxin isn't active anyway, but yeah, he's going straight for that Blastoise card. Yeah, he moved the Blastoise right to the bottom of the deck, puts it in his hand. He does not have to show his opponent, because it is a computer search. It searches for any card. And um, looks like Takuya has no idea, even though I, yeah, I have a feeling he suspects something. He probably figures that it was one of the other ones. Let's show Computer Search again. We showed that last game. Again, it's the A-Spec card that's being run in both decks. You can only run one A-Spec card. Sometimes you'll see a different one in each deck. But again, we're seeing that incredibly versatile. Find any card you want in the deck. Yeah, there's a lot of A-Specs. There, there is actually a Pokemon catcher onto the Garbodor. This means quite a bit because if, uh, if James can actually attach enough energies onto this Kel uh, Keldeo, he'll be able to knock out the Garbodor, and that means, that means so much. He has three water energies here. I believe he just superior energy retrieval. Is that it? Or, or did he silent, maybe? Uh, I, did, I did not see what he played. We don't have his discard there. I Either way, we see three water energies. Right, that's what exactly. So the, wa the water energies are in his hand, or they're going to be in his hand pretty soon anyways. That means that he's going to be able to attack with his Keldeo, and that means that the first Garbodor is going to go down without even having the ability to use its ability. Right, and even if he doesn't knock it out this turn, having Garbodor up front is not a situation you want. Unless you got that Floatstone, Garbodor has a huge four-cost four cost retreat, which means getting it out of the active position, and your deck is not set up to attack with that Garbodor, which means it's kind of dead weight up front. So the, the Squirtle does evolve into a War Turtle, I believe, which means that another Blastoise could come into play, just for the sake of being fancy. So three water energies are in play for Keldeo EX. Yep. The Garbodor gets knocked out without being able to stop the, the Deluge, and now all of a sudden the, the tides have turned, and James is in the lead. That's right, and here we go. It looks like Taku's going to be playing out a Skyla. Let's mm -hmm. you search your deck for any tra trainer card. Yes, that is correct. Any trainer card, and that's a full art Skyla, which just kind of adds fancy points to the game. Let's take a look at Skyla here real quick. Uh, Skyla is a card that as soon as it came out really had big impact on the game. He's going to go for Ultra Ball, I believe. No? Uh, okay, he, let's see. What, what can uh, Takuya actually do here? He, he lost his first Garbodor, which means that his uh, second Garbodor better do damage, better actually be able to stop things. However, even if he does get a Garbodor in play, the Keldeo EX now has three energies on it. It's... It's really dangerous currently, and he's going to have to find a way to not only stop Deluge, but stop the Keldeo as well. Right. He's got that Keldeo poisoned. He could potentially stop them from moving around very much if he gets that Garbodor active, but he probably does not have everything he needs to get Garbodor active at this point. Now, so you know, the, the Blastoise decks tend to shy away from playing cards like Switch. They say, you know what, I've, I have a ton of Keldeos, I have a ton of, um, of other uh, ways to really retreat, get out of sticky situations, so... Having a Garbodor in play, stopping the Keldeo's rushing ability, and uh, Pokemon capturing something like a Blastoise is really effective for slowing down the game quite a bit and really reassuring yourself uh, more time to be able to really establish some sort of a board presence. Right. You talk about playing Pokemon Catcher on your opponent's Blastoise. Just like Garbodor, it's there for its ability. Its retreat is huge, and its attack is not that great, and very expensive, which means if you get that Blastoise spread up front, you're not in a situation that you want to be in. Not that great is kind of an understatement, but yeah, I'll, I'll accept that. Now, uh, I did not catch what he's doing. What, what has... Uh, why is he uh, just moving cards face down? I believe he's probably looking at discarding some cards for maybe an Ultra Ball or something. Right, he's counting out his hand, figuring out what cards he may discard to the card that he ends up getting with that Skyla. So Skyla still still has not decided on the final target of Skyla, but he's like going to go straight for Juniper. Yeah, it looks like he went for a Juniper. So his hand, obviously not that great if he's, uh, if he's actually support, uh, playing a supporter in order to fetch a supporter for the following turn. Let's take a quick look at Professor Juniper. That's a card that's being been played a ton since the beginning of the BW series inception. Yeah, well, he actually faked me out because not only did he have, uh, well, he's computer searching here, and he not only played a Skyla, but he plays a computer search as well, which lets him search for Zach for any card, and he actually got a Garbodor. So he's still trying to really uh, slow this game down. Dark patch onto the Dark Ride. Now, the, that, the second Dark Ride has two energies on it. Three energies now. Uh, yep, three energies. Yep. And plays a Garbodor, and... I didn't see the tool, but he's got that tool active and catches up that Blastoise, just like we were talking about. Yeah, that's exactly what Takuya needed. He needs to slow this game down. He needs to be able to knock this Blastoise out, put some damage onto this Keldeo, really stop, uh, stop, stop the momentum from James, because James had an incredible turn, but Takuya kind of... Uh, 
you know, said, I got you back. He's got a complete combo breaker there, and even though the poison is cleared off of the Keldeo EX when it goes to the bench, the Dark Spear is also doing 30 extra damage. Now, you said that you didn't, know, you didn't notice which, uh, which Pokemon tool was attached to the Garbodor. Honestly, it tends to not really matter. Really, what, what, uh, what a Garbodor player is trying to do is just attach any Pokemon tool he can, including something like a Dark Clouds. Yeah, you know. Right, you're not going to get the ability out of the Dark Claw, but you are turning on Garbatoxin, and that's what he needed stat. Exactly. So, it's on James now. James has to be feeling pretty bad. He, he can choose not to do anything and maybe just attack a, attach a water energy to, like, a new Keldeo or something, but really that's, that, all that does is help uh, Takuya say, well, okay, I guess we're going to take an extra turn here. And that's if Takuya decides to. Really, Takuya is completely in the driver's seat here, and we'll have to wait and see what, uh, what Takuya chooses to do. James now, just played his own Skyla to get his own Professor Juniper, so kind of mirroring Takuya there. Yeah, now remember that if somehow, some way, the Blastoid or the Keldeo does get to attack again, and, it, and it po say he plays a Pokemon catcher onto this Garbodor. Uh, Tequia will be completely out of Garbodors. Both Garbodors will have hit the, uh, the discard pile, and we will see a very fair game from that point on. Right. We, we're in a great situation right now, but he's on the, on the razor's edge. If that Garbodor gets caught, it's, that could be the game right there. Exactly. Now, Tequia does take his turn. He doesn't have a very large hand, but he does have that Juniper that he scouted for last exactly. turn. Exactly. Discards, his, discards some cards. One of them was a Darkness Energy with Dark Patch. Not a big deal. Yeah, it might have actually been the only other card in his hand. I'm not really sure. But either way, it gets a brand new hand of seven cards. And we'll have to wait and see what, uh, what Takuya does from here on out. Looks like he's got the Sableye for Junk Hunt if he needs it. Oh, and he's man. also got that Burbank Gym. Another Juniper. It looks like another N. Kind of a hand bonanza, except for nothing actually impacting the board stay right now. But he's got a fully powered up. Dark right with a Dark Claw on it, so anything that he wants to take out, he can at this point. Now let me tell you, my heart is beating really fast because that, that, uh, that Sableye happens to be my favorite Pokemon in the game. Junk Hunt happens to be my favorite attack in the game, and I can't wait to see if maybe, <laughs> potentially, I might be uh, treated to some really beautiful stuff here from, from Junk Hunt. Because I'm, I'm telling you, once you've established this lock, there's nothing sweeter than actually being able to say, oh, well, let's, uh, let's see what we can do here. And just taking all the, all the time in the world to really establish your dominance. Right. It even feels like you're kind of taking some time off by bringing the Sableye up front, junk hunting at your leisure. Of course, he does have to be a little careful here because he does have the active Garbodor. does mean that he cannot do his Dark Cloak tricks to put whichever Pokemon he wants up front. Correct. Now, as cute or as nice as it would be to be able to really junk on here, it might not be the, the, the best possible move. He might just want to take the, the uh, attack onto, um, onto Blastoise and get rid of the Blastoise for good, but he decides not to. He decides to actually junk on, and I couldn't be happier. <laughs> of course, he has to discard to retreat because he has no Dark Cloak, but with Junk Hunt, he's going to be getting that Dark Patch back, basically putting that at a complete neutral and picking up himself an extra catcher Pokemon here. catcher for his trouble. Yeah, I would personally take a catcher here. He does have options. He can, play, he can pick up a laser. He can pick up a... Maybe a second Dark Patch if he has one. I mean, he really does have a lot of options. Yeah, but Catcher and Dark Patch him. is where he goes. Yeah, now, this is the beauty of it. Because not only did he not lose re he really uh, lose energy attachments because he's picking up this Dark Patch anyways, he also gets to refill his hand. To, uh, waste the resources are not an issue at this point. Yep, so it looks like we're moving right along here. James is trying to do what he can. Oh, he's got a Tool Scrapper. So that's going to shut down the Garbodor for at least this turn and also gets rid of a Dirt Claw. That is really big. That's even though Takuya's uh, play with the junk hunt was potentially correct. You you take this giant risk by by giving your opponent you know all these extra turns to really top deck cards like Tool Scrapper, which are just game breaking, honestly. And and that's incredible, given that that was James' only Tool Scrapper, and he had one Tool Scrapper in his hand, in his deck and decided not to Skyla for it. Maybe he had it in his hand already, but he ended up picking it up off that Juniper. It looks like. Uh, yeah, I'm not really sure, but what does. Uh, what does actually matter here is that he's going to be able to rush, and he's going to be able to actually capture up the Garbodor if he has it, and that's what's going to matter most. And he's going to get that uh, damaged uh, Blastoise out of the active position, which is not where he wants that thing to be. Yeah, Takuya cannot be feeling good here. He decided to take, the, take it slow, and it backfired by uh, his opponent playing the only Tool Scrapper in his deck. It's been really interesting. Each player's turn in this game so far feels like they have suddenly completely thwarted their opponent, and then it completely reverses on the next turn. Yeah, seriously, it, no kidding. It's been a real back-and-forth slugfest so far. Yeah, so uh, 
<laughs> I might sound really silly here because I keep saying, oh, man, he's in control. No, no, he's in control now. And go figure now. I feel like James is back in control because he's going to be able to not only rush in and if, uh, well, I, I shouldn't get too ahead of myself. He still needs to get Pokemon Catcher. Yeah, it's true. I, yeah. I'm saying, oh, the, the Garbodor's as good as knocked out, blah, blah, blah. But reality, uh, he still needs a Pokemon Catcher. Right. With no Catcher, the best that he can do is take out that Sableye. And he might not even want to do that. Yeah, I mean... Yeah, <laughs> you are right. There, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. And another thing to note is that Blastoise tends to not really play too many Pokemon catchers. They definitely don't play all four usually. And some, some lists play two, some lists play three. Uh, if, I'm, if I'm James, I'm hoping I play three here. <laughs> exactly. It looks like James is playing three. Good. But he still has to draw it. So we'll have to wait and see if he got it. I don't believe he did because his turn would have been much faster at this point. Yeah, he probably would have gotten that up there just to make sure that everything was nailed down. But it looks like he's doing that plan B that those Blastoise Keld Keldeo decks have to do sometime, which is get a Blastoise fully powered up to use the attack on it just in case. So we do see a rush in at least, and we're going to see, uh, at, at the very least, a knockout on Sableye. But ideally, we would see a knockout on the Garbodor. Get rid of that thing for good. I mean, you only have one tool scrapper. You have a one-turn window to really establish... Uh, or to really get rid of this uh, Garbodor for good now, because the, the first one's already gone. Right. And who knows if uh, Takeo even has the tool, though. So there's the knockout. Using the EXP share, he gets to save the energy, which is a card that was seeing a lot of play for about a year there, but then kind of went out of favor. And it's interesting to see Takuya actually playing it here in this deck. Yeah, well, when you have access to so many Pokemon tools in order to really make Garbodor work, <laughs> uh, you get to play around and be fancy with, with uh, tools such as EXP share. So... I believe we might have seen a, I, I want to say we saw a Dark Patch, the Dark Patch that yep. had Sableye Junk Hunter for last turn. Um, I want to see a tool here. If I'm Takuya, I want to see, I need, no, I don't want to see a tool. I need to see a tool. That's right. And James is pleading, pleading with, with all that is Pokemon that there won't be a tool coming up on that other side. So much is being balanced around like one card being found or not caught found. So the Tropical Beach is finally uh, taken out of play. I believe it's for a Burbank. Uh, yeah, that's a Burbank City Gym. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so it is for a Burbank, and we still don't see a tool. That's what matters most in this turn. Trust me, no matter what no matter what we say, the Pokemon tool on the Garbodor is what matters most. Right, and uh, Darkrai currently uh, cannot knock out that uh, Keldeo EX. Well, it's got 50 damage on it, I believe. Yes, it does. Oh, yep. So 120, he would need maybe a Hypnotoxic Laser. Right. That would be able to do the trick. And but I haven't seen a laser yet. Though. He's flashing the tool. He's flashing a floatstone there. He hasn't completely attached it, but he has revealed that. Floatstone's a nice tool to have there because it kind of plays two, uh, two tricks here. Right, so he's switching his Dark Rise. Then he's going to shut, shut down all the abilities with the Garbatox and made sure that he used his Dark Cloak before that shutdown happened. Now, I do want to see a laser here if I'm Takuya, but I'm not sure if I'm going to. <laughs> uh, we see a Pokemon catcher onto the damaged Blastoise, maybe? Oh, he's taking his time. He's... Maybe, okay, not the damaged Blastoise, the actually undamaged Blastoise. He's deciding not to knock out this Keldeo and instead going to Ultra Ball. Uh, he's, he's, uh, he's actually messing with me. That's what he's doing right here. He, he does Ultra Ball, though. Now, what Pokemon do you think he's really needing at this point? Darkrai's got to really be, be about the only one yeah, left in the deck. He doesn't really need anything anyways. Um, it's not a matter of needing something. It's more a matter of just getting rid of some cards in your hand. You have the Ultra Ball, why not use it, etc. Right. He's going to end anyway, so you might as well do that. Mm -hmm. So you thin your hand. Um, the Ultra Ball isn't a card he wants to redraw when he ends, so he Ultra Balls even though he isn't necessarily looking to pick up a Pokemon with it, so he doesn't redraw that Ultra Ball off of the end. Yeah, exactly. And not only that, but like when you get to the later stages of the game and your opponent starts ending you to you know, a really small hand size, the last thing you want to do is see an Ultra Ball when you have no Pokemon left in your deck, etc. So get rid of these cards, never see them again. Get riddance. Yep. Picks up another Darkness Energy, attaches it to Darkrai, finds that laser. He had to change his, his mind there. Oh, puts that Blastoise to sleep. Yeah, heads on laser uh, does mean quite a bit because the, dark, the Blastoise does have energy on it to be able to retreat. So now, uh, now James's uh, Blastoise actually has to wake up in order to be able to retreat in case it wants to. Right. And that. And remember, with Furbank Gym, Poison is going to be doing an extra 20 damage in between turns, two more damage counters on Poison Pokemon. Absolutely. So a Night Spear will go down here, and he's going to deal 30 damage to the, to the Keldeo, meaning he will no longer need to actually play a, a Hypnotoxic Laser onto it to knock it out. Right. That puts both of James's bench Pokemon within full, the full force of uh, Night Spear range. Tails on, tails on, the, uh, on the Sleep Flip. The, the Blastoise stays asleep. That means quite a bit here. That means that uh, uh, Blastoise is going to be knocked out. You're no longer going to have any more energy on your bench, Blastoise. It, back to square one. Right. Once again, the entire momentum of this game is flipped around to the other side, and Takuya is really pushing it. 
Now, the bad news for Takuya is that he only played one Sable and it's gone. So we won't be seeing any more junk hunting, and that does hurt my heart, but maybe, maybe um, he won't need to. That's true. It does break down some of his options. It means that he can't get back those lasers, dark patches, catchers, etc. that he's been playing over and over that they kind of rely on. He does have his own catcher here. Now that Keldeo is quote-unquote stuck up there because the uh, Garbodor has the ability on it, Garbotoxin, which has been activated by that tool. So that means that he cannot uh, sneak anyone around with Dark Cloak at this point. Exactly. Now, the Floatstone is also on the, on the Garbodor, which also <laughs> happens to be a negative here because I don't know how many Floatstones he might play, but he can't play, the, he can't play uh, all that. He can't have all that many left. It looks like he plays three float stones. I believe he's had one gone already. I don't know if there's been more than that gone. Verbank City Gym leaves the play as the Tropical Beach shows up, and another Keldeo goes into play on James's side. So the Verbank City Gym actually being gone means quite a bit. That means the Blasters will not be knocked out at the end of his own turn, uh, and it will only take 10 damage, which means that at the end of Sequoia's turn, the Blasters will actually finally be knocked out. That means so much because no longer will he be you know, forced into such a bad spot coming into his own turn in case the, the Kelio does get to retreat for free. Right. That doesn't, James is in a much better position by having, allowing his Blastoise to be the Pokemon that's kind of in the crossfire or in the crosshairs when it comes back to Takuya's turn. So he does actually get the Tropical Beach. He Tropical Beaches for three at the end of his turn and flips to see if he wakes up unnecessarily, but fine. And he does. So the Blastoise gets to be awake for, to see its own demise. Right. We're going to play an end here. And it uh, looks like Takuya might be diving. Who knows for what? He did play a Dark Energy on Keldeo. Not sure what's going to be going on there. Let's bring Keldeo up and look at it again since both decks are playing it. And look at how kind of how that card changes in power when there's an active Garbatoxin in play, which shuts down its ability to rush in and shuts down its friend's Blastoise ability to deluge onto it. Now, the normal Blastoise decks that don't play things like, um, like Garbador and whatnot, they do tend to play Energy Switch. I'm not sure if the uh, if the uh, if Takuya's Blastoise deck plays Energy Switch because you do have to cut Takuya's cards. Darkrai deck. Yes, my apologies, my apologies. Um, but yeah, I'm not sure if, sure if Takuya's Darkrai deck plays any Energy Switch because you do have to cut some cards in order to fit all these tools in in Garbodors. Yeah, it looks like there aren't any in there, so that's something that he's going to have to deal with right now. Yeah, he's only looking for a Floatstone at this point, and he doesn't find it, so he passes. Uh, I believe he passes, and if he does, we'll have to wait and see what happens. He does pass. Yep. So that Black Kyurem EX just came down on James's side. Let's take a look at Black Kyurem EX because that's a card that ended up making those uh, Blastoise Keldeo decks. It gave them one little extra edge that they were looking for. Yes, the Black Kyurem EX deals so much damage. Black Ballista deals 200 damage. That'll knock out any Pokemon in this game currently. And that just, I mean, that's power. <laughs> that is power. Once you do is establish your Blastoise's uh, your Blastoise's deluge ability, and you started attaching energies like crazy to this uh, to this Black Kyurem EX, you're be you're able to take at you know up to two prizes a turn for the next three or so turns and just in the game. Right. You have to discard three energy every time you use Black Ballista, but that deluge will just refill those water energy back onto Black Kyurem EX. So that you might normally think, well, there's no way that you could attack with Black Ballista in a row, but you'll see these Blastoise decks do it three turns in a row with no problem. Yeah, now it does take quite a bit of help because you, you also have to attach them from your hand. They don't just come out of nowhere, but that's where Superior Energy Retrieval comes into play. Superior Energy Retrieval allows you to discard two cards from your hand and get any four ener basic energy cards from your discard pile and put them back into your own hand. It's a great combo with Blastoise's Deluge ability. So we'll have to wait and see what... Uh, that is oh, Pokemon catcher. There's Pokemon the catcher, catcher on that Garbodor. Garbodor. The Garbodor will no longer be in play at the end of James's turn, and that means we will we'll be able to see as many delusions as we want for the rest of this game. Right. Black Kyurem could actually end up becoming quite a bit, uh, quite a big game breaker here. Right, and it, it looks like Takuya, well, even though he kept having those situations where he was set up in these great positions, he was never able to capitalize, whereas James has already taken three prizes, two more than Takuya has. So each of those times that he was applying the pressure, he was actually able to follow through on it a little easier. Yeah, Blast, uh, Darkrai is not the fastest deck in the world. It really isn't. But Blastoise tends to be much slower. Not this game. This game has been all James from the very beginning, and he's not slowing down. James is, James is in the driver's seat. I can say that now and actually mean it. Yeah, there's really no way for Takuya to currently shut down uh, anything that's going on in James's side now that both Garbodors are in the discard pile. Yeah, with the, with the Garbodors gone, you're now going to be able to see really what these decks are, are meant to do, and that's once again, what gives Blasters the advantage. Right. Now, Takuya gets a big advantage here. He's not doing anything tricky anymore. He's just going to, like, 
put the big damage on Keldeo, get the knockout there, and also get the knockout on that Blastos that had taken so much damage. So he does make a big pushback here, picking up three prizes in a single turn. So a lot of this is going to come down to what James has on his side. Well, he's now fresh out of Blastoise, so he can't do any Deluge right now. So that means that nothing's going to happen instantly unless maybe he's got a candy and another Blastoise hanging out. Exactly. Now, you might be wondering, you know, he had two Blastoises at the end of his last turn. Oh, there he goes. Yeah, there it is. That is another rare candy Blastoise. We now see a third Blastoise in play. And, a and there's energy. that superior energy retrieval. We are going to see a Black Blist at the end of this turn. James Good is going to go down to a single prize necessary, and Blastoise is in action. So, as I was saying, uh, we did see two Blastoises at the end of James Good's last turn, and now he had zero up until now. That just, I mean, I'm telling you, the, the, the ability to deal so much damage and, and, you know, seemingly come out of nowhere and with, these, with these new decks is really surprising. Right. There's just a ton of acceleration in the format right now, which nothing is ever as it seems. As de Decks can go from zero to, as you see, that Black Kirami X has four energy on it where it wasn't even in play the turn before. Yes. Now, uh, I believe we just saw an N. So yes. we're going to go down to two cards for yeah, Takuya and... James is going to go down to three, but then he's going to take two prizes, so he's going to have a five-card hand at the end of his turn. Right, and now his, uh, that does mean that his uh, Black Kirami X is, does not have enough energy on it to attack next turn, and uh, Takuya's going to bring that up, although I did s believe I saw that James flashed a superior energy retrieval. Yeah, so Takuya has basically resigned himself to saying, look, I, I really have to hope you don't have a superior energy retrieval here. Right. I have a two-card hand. I really can't do much. There's the Bam, superior energy there it is, right off, off the, top. the top of his deck. That's the end of the game one. Takuya has gone down 1-0 to James Good. Takuya is undefeated. At the, end of, at the end of the top 16, he had not lost in the last 16 or so rounds, and now he's one game away from being eliminated. Yep, we'll see if he can, can counter there. When he was ahead, he needed to be applying the pressure and taking those prizes a little earlier. When he tried to get like a little tricky with that Sableye, that might have been what cost him. If he would have been taking out Pokemon earlier, it might have worked for him. But it was tough to say that he shouldn't have been playing for the long game at that point and that he should have been playing faster. Yeah, it, it's risky. I understand it's risky, but these things do happen. Your opponent does have the tool scrapper to really get himself out of this spot, and he just happened to have it on that specific turn that he needed it. So, I don't know. I, I guess I'm just defending Junk Hunt here. That was a big, but that whole game, like we were talking, the momentum switched back and forth so often. It was tough to see who was going to be ahead at any point in that game. Yeah, it, it was really back and forth, and it truly was. Like, I understand that it seems like it was swinging back and forth or whatnot, but it, I just, uh, man, it, everybody was just drawing the exact cards that they needed at the exact same, at the exact right time. And it made for a great match. It made for a really entertaining match. It was nonstop but, uh, haymakers into each other the full time. But I'm sure that each of them thought that they were, that they had locked up game one uh, at several times. Several times, yeah. yeah. So now that, now that James Good is up by a single game, time limit is a factor. We do, we do definitely want to see if we can get all three games completed before the end of the 75 minute time limit. But if they don't, James is going to be at the advantage here because. I'm not sure if, uh, if Takuya is going to be able to finish three games. Well, Takuya is going to have to now understand that since he is back on that, uh, he is down a game. He is going to definitely be playing for that faster game, I assume. He can't be play playing tricky moves with Junk Hunt to try to set stuff up later down the road. He needs to make sure that he gets that game done as soon as he can. Yeah, Dark Ray, the Dark Ray Garbodor deck can actually be a, a really fast Dark Ray deck with the right hand. It doesn't have the energy switches or whatnot, but it does have the ability to just dark patch onto onto a bench dark ride with the right with the right hand and just start night spearing from turn two on or turn one on if you're if you're actually that lucky. Right, you can do some pretty ridiculous early plays with dark ride if you get just the right hand. It's a little tougher to be that super fast and that super aggressive with Blastoise because so many of them are like combos that you need plus multiple copies of water energy to be able to pull off any of those three or four cost attacks you have in your deck. Sheesh. Uh, now, he only uh, James Good only plays two Lightning Energy and ni uh, nine Water Energy. That's an 11 Energy card um, deck in a 60 card deck. That's, that's a little bit lower than I'm used to. I'm, I'm used to playing something like three Lightning Energy, but uh, I guess I play a little bit safer than, than James does. But that could become an issue. That it, Once you get, start getting in down to a really low hand size, Superior Energy Retrieval might not be in your hand at that point, or you might not have the cards to be able to discard for the Energy Retrieval, and this could become a factor. Th this is actually, ac actually truly important. Right. Both players have moved up into their setup phase. There was no mulligan from either player. And uh, looks like uh, Takuya will, of course, be going first. Ooh, not the best start that uh, James is looking for, although it does give him quite the HP buffer. But again, on the other side, not the setup that Takuya was looking for. Well, the floatstone onto the, the Keldeo EX is actually pretty nice. It means that you're going to be able to rush in and just retreat whenever you'd like until your Garbodor is actually in play. This Ultra Ball gets to discard, or I'm sorry, this Computer Surge gets to discard the Darkness Energy and an Ultra Ball, which is fine. Uh, it's going to let him search for 
any card that he wants. He's flashing the dark ray. He's computer searched. Yeah, he's saying, oh, wait, I didn't ultra black, I computer searched. So, right. Yeah. Um, Might be sure. doing kind of the psych out there. Uh, not, well, maybe, potentially, but I feel like he might have assumed that he was uh, ultra balling and then... Got the card he, that's yeah. the card he ended up wanting anyway. Yeah. So he's... I'm, I'm assuming I'm going to see either an energy universe. Right. He's got to have a supporter in his hand that's going to make that less relevant, but he's got the dark patch there too. Yep. There is a Juniper. He's going to be able to draw a new hand of seven cards. Now, interestingly enough, he had an EXP share in his hand, but chose not to play it onto his Dark Ray. There might have been. He might have been saying, "You know what? I'd rather see a Dark Claw onto my Dark Ray or something like that." I don't really feel like spending an EXP share on a Dark Ray that's likely going to be attacking, anyways. Exactly. Each Pokemon can only have one Pokemon tool attached to it at a time. So even though he could have put that EXP share on that Dark Ray, it would have blocked it from having the superior for his early game battles that he's looking for, Dark Claw. Now, what's interesting here is I believe he had a Hypnotoxic Laser in his hand, and he chose not to play it. He chose not to uh, really spend it because his opponent hasn't shown any Keldeo EXs yet. A lot of players would just say, hey, look, I have a laser. My opponent has a, has a single Pokemon. Want to try and get luckier. But right. he understands that this game's likely going to go for the long game, and without a, without a Verbank City Gym in play, he doesn't really want to deal. Well, even with Verbank right City Gym, you're not going to get a fast knockout on Black Kiram EX with, via Poison. It's just going to take too long, and it's really going to be to his advantage to save his Hypnotoxic Laser for a better position. And coming out for James here, they're both going to refresh their hand and draw up to six. Yeah, James level balled in order to find a Squirtle. Then he played a Tropical Beach, which is obviously what he wants to do here, and plays an end. He gets a new hand of six, and he's looking for another Squirtle. He's also looking for yeah, well, definitely a Squirtle here, and maybe a Keldeo EX. The, the rest doesn't truly matter, but getting multiple Squirtles in play and ensuring that you'll have one on your following turn is truly what you want. Yeah, and so James has just got a bunch of... He's in full setup here, playing an end, playing a Tropical Beach. He's going to get basically as many cards as he wants here on this turn. He did find that second Squirtle, which is actually a lot more important than it looks. Uh, your opponent will not be able to get some sort of a dark patch shenanigans going and capturing your only Squirtle, and then all of a sudden you're out of, you're out of real options. Exactly, and the built-in safety with uh, Dark Spear with that Shell Shield. Yeah, now the Ultra... Or, I'm sorry. The, the Tropical Beach only netted him two cards. He had an Ultra Ball in his hand, and he chose not to use it to draw more cards. So... Even though we saw a Blastoise in his hand, we also did not see a Rare Candy. However, it didn't end up mattering because we see an N from Takuya's side. And Again, neither player's cards. taken a prize yet, so that's going to be another full N, as they say. Uh, both players getting six cards. As the young ones say. That's what the kids say these days. Yep. So we are going to see a new hand of six cards from each player. James, looking for a Rare Candy Blastoise. Mm, he'll, take, he'll take other stuff, but he's looking for Rare Candy Blastoise. Takuya, looking for some Trubbishes. Now the cut is complete, and we're going to see their hand of six. I'm telling you, Takuya needs a Trubbish here. But I don't believe he sees one. So. Yeah, from last game, he had an embarrassment of Trubbish. In this game, there's no Trubbish to be found at all. This time, he does decide to play the laser, and his opponent, it's, uh, Black Hiram, is asleep. Yep. Not sure if that's relevant. <laughs> Actually, I'm pretty sure it's not. But Well, he sees the writing on the roll, and it's like there's a small chance that there could be a Black Ballista next turn. If, if he did not put that Black Hero asleep. It's small, but, but he might just be <laughs> trying to apply the 25% chance of Black Hero staying asleep versus the chance of James being able to pull out Rare Candy, Blastoise, Electric Energy, and Three Water. Drawing an extra card from Tropical Beach doesn't hurt either. Exactly. James's turn. James is looking for a Rare Candy, Blastoise. I see an Ultra Ball in his hand. and Looks like a computer it. search as well. Oh, really? So the Ultra Ball computer search, if he has a supporter, he might be able to pull this off. Computer search first. Choosing which cards he wants to discard, because now, remember, he can't use those later. Now, some people might be wondering, why, why do these players take so long discarding cards? Like, you already see the computer search. What's really going on here? Why, you know, why, are, why, why does the game slow down to, you know, to kind of like a snail's pace? And in reality, every card in, this, in each player's deck truly matters quite a bit. They only have 60 cards. They only have access to sometimes a single copy of certain cards, so you, don't, you do not want to waste your Pokemon catchers, for example. These cards that could potentially mean the difference between two prizes and one later on in the game. Right, just like we were talking, James is only playing one Tool Scrapper, which means that he can play three Pokemon catcher. Maybe that not be the one for one, but if he went up to two Tool Scrapper, he could only play two Pokemon catcher then. So each card is in like such a balance that the card that you discard to cards like Ultra Ball and Computer Search are really going to be a tough choice. The Computer Search ended up finding him a rare candy. The Blastoise was already in his hand. He did not need to Ultra Ball. And not only does he do that, but he also gets a War Turtle into play. Silence for, I'm assuming, maybe something like Triple Water or Double Water with a Lightning. And after the potential Deluge, we're going to see a nice 
large tropical beach for something up to like six cards. Exactly, and and just like Takuya may have been looking for, he's a card away from having that black ballista being active this turn if that black Kiram wasn't asleep. So you, you might think it was out there, but clearly James was able to put that all together. Yeah, even though he won't be able to black ballista this turn, he's still going to be able to attach a lot of energies and that takes advantage of the Deluge ability. The, the Black Kiram is not going to get knocked out next turn. There's almost no chance of that happening. Right. Actually. Plus he gets six cards off of his Tropical Beach. But Black Kiram's still snoozing. Yeah, it's, uh, it's taking a page out of Snorlax's handbook. And the opponent is now going to be able to attach freely onto his Dark Rite, maybe start getting some Night Spears in. Yep, and since he's got that Float Stone on Keldeo, he can bring up the Dark Rite whenever he's ready. If he could pull out a Verbank Gym here, he could like suddenly switch the tables on that Black Kiram EX. Now, um, you can definitely Pokemon catch with the, the, uh, the Blastoise here. You have not seen your opponent play a single Keldeo yet, and you never know. He might not be able to find one uh, later on. And either way, you'll still be able to get something like 90, 110 damage, even if you see a Dark Claw. That's, or even a, you know, um, oh, there's a Trubbish. Finally gets that Trubbish. Trubbish finally come into play. A little late, but hey, better late than never. Right. Now, Takuya did play a Juniper, and when he did, he discarded a Colrus. Let's take a look at Colrus. That's a card a lot of players have been playing, but because of the special uh, restrictions on Colrus, it wasn't the best card for him to play at this point in time. We only see, we see a measly 90 damage onto the Black Harem. Um, after the poison, he will be at uh, 12 damage, 11 damage, something like that, and three damage counters get attached to the Blastoise. That means that we're looking, we're going to be looking at a Night Spear pretty soon. Black Kyurem stays asleep. That is huge. James is not going to be able to play his Black Ballista, even if he gets another Water Energy, which he surely has after drawing that many cards. So that is a huge win for Takuya. That Hypnotoxic Laser doing some definite work on his side. I can just picture the, the Kyurem just like hitting the snooze button over and over. Five more minutes, five more minutes. Um, the... Ideal, the ideal setup here is going to be attaching another energy to, to say the Kyurem, playing, getting a Keldeo in play, and then somehow magically having another couple energy to, to retreat the Keldeo. Right. If he can get a rush in to go off, but I don't see a Keldeo in his hand, but he's got that Ultra Ball, so he may be making a play to Keldeo to get, because he's got to get Black Kyurem out of there, or he's going to lose two prizes for basically nothing. By the way, I take it back. I found a better ideal play, the, the greatest theoretical mind at work, and he'll be able to actually get a Keldeo into play in his... Uh, uh, onto his bench, attach three energies to the Keldeo, and actually attack with the Keldeo and not waste so many energies with his, uh, with his Kyurem. And he was able to catch her up that Trubbish, making sure that that Garbodor still doesn't get active. Now, I believe the Trubbish only has 60 HP, correct? Uh, that Trubbish, I believe, yes, has 60 or fewer HP. It certainly doesn't have more. Okay. Well, if he only has two energies in his hand, he can still rush in, retreat, and actually slash for 60 damage. Yeah, I, I kind of know what Black Kyurem happens to do. I hope. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll certainly find out here. So, either way, I believe that the Trubbish is going to get knocked out at the end of this turn. Yeah, it seems hard for Trubbish to stay up. Uh, oh, he's got a heavy ball looking for another Blastoise to go on top of that War Turtle. The natural way, no rare candy needed this time. Blastoise and Black here are the two Pokemon that you can find with your heavy ball. And uh, they are pretty heavy, but they're also pretty good. Yeah, uh, some it's a case where that high retreat cost can actually be a benefit. Yeah, now, getting a second Blastoise in play is really nice. It means that your opponent can't just target your, uh, your current Blastoise and uh, all of a sudden hit Toxic Laser or something like that and get it out of play, and then all of a sudden you're stuck. Right, there's that third energy on Keldeo, so he's not even going to need to do any silly tricks with Keldeo. Just get it up there, and uh, it's going to be able to knock out that Trubbish right away. I'm feeling pretty good about my reads here. So he is going to be able to actually knock out the Trubbish with the Keldeo, and the Black Kyurem will no longer be in any danger unless his opponent happens to have a catcher as well. He gets that second Keldeo, which allows him to do some uh, fancy moves if anyone gets uh, sleep or anything like that with uh, Hypnotoxic Laser. Now, what's interesting to me is that he decides to fill his bench, like, almost freely. This tells me that he's either not afraid of Absol or... No, it tells me that he's not afraid of Absol. Right. Uh, he's, he's a very brave man, I'll tell you that much, because you're... A, your opponent's Absol coming out out of nowhere to deal maximum damage, it's very dangerous. And actually, I don't believe Takuya happens to play the Absol. So no, Takuya does. does. Takuya has yeah. an Absol, and he also plays Chorus, which he's seen. Uh, I don't know how many. He's only got two Chorus in the deck. Oh, but the catcher taking out that Black Kirami X. Yeah, the catcher's really what I wanted to see here. If he, hadn't, if he wasn't able to catch her, he would have been in a lot of trouble. But now that he uh, did, he'll be able to take two prizes and... Act, more importantly, be able to get rid of that black here before it really deals any damage. Right. It really didn't affect uh, James's board state that negatively because he wasn't going to be doing much with that uh, black Kyurem EX anyway. One interesting thing, now it puts extra energy in his discard pile for those superior energy retrievals. Now, 
I mean, the Black Hiram did threaten to be able to knock out the, the Dark Rider in one, in one hit, which not only takes two prizes and gets you down to three, it also gets rid of pretty much most of your energy on board except for the, the last two on the other Dark Rider. So it was going to be very dangerous. Now, that's not to say that we're not going to see a um, Black Hiram here this turn. It's very simple for, for the Blastoise deck to get a Black Hiram into play the, uh, from this point on. So a Skyla's potentially going to find, uh, I, would, I would assume it would find something like a, like a Heavy Ball for a Black Hiram or something like that if he does have the Superior Energy Retrieval. Uh, he may be out of Black Hiram, I believe, since he played that one early that he actually may have Ultra Balled it away early game. I don't remember for sure, but I think he may be fresh out of Black Hiram in that deck. Yeah, if, if, if indeed you are correct, then that's, that's a huge, huge weight off of, off of uh, Takuya's uh, shoulders because that's, that's the most dangerous Pokemon for you. When you're the Dark Ride deck, the reason that you're, that you're so far behind in the matchup is because you only deal a measly, a measly with, in quotes, 90 damage while your opponent just happens to deal 200 and knock you out in one hit. So you just do not trade, uh, tr trade prizes very well. Right. However, if the Black Hiram is gone, then your opponent has to struggle really hard to really um, deal so much damage because the, the Keldeo EX just requires so many energies. Right, and that gets you in a dangerous situation where you're overloading a single Pokemon with so much energy that it starts to become a liability. You're absolutely right. Let's see what James is going to do this turn. Has the Ultra Ball that he's going to play. Now... James doesn't really have anything that he truly needs anymore. Um, Assuming he, that that other Black Keldeo is gone. Black Hiram, yes. Black Hiram. You're absolutely right. If he, if he does have a Black Hiram in, in the rest, in, inside of his deck, then obviously there's a pretty good target in there. I see a Keldeo, I see a Blastoise. He's looking for the Blastoise. He's going to get a triple Blastoise in play, I think. I mean, it certainly doesn't hurt to do that, and the cards weren't doing him any good anyway. So he might as well get that extra Blastoise out there just because, and that's going to keep him from drawing those other cards later on if there's another end or something like that. So he deals 110 damage to the opponent's Dark Rat. That's not what you want to be doing if you're Blastoise. You want to uh, take advantage of your, uh, of your situation here, and you don't want to just trade two prizes for two prizes with, with Dark Rat or you know, trade two at knockouts with each other. Right, especially when the Dark Rat got the upper, upper hand there. So now it's back to Takuya. Takuya, uh, this is, this is uh, actually a much different game from, from game one. Game one was a, a game of, of, of haymakers in reality, where each turn you would just see one player take a, take a huge lead over Ooh. the other. And now a Colrus for, for nine. I was up right. to say a full ten. He's got a Colrus for nine and an Absol with his opponent that has almost an entirely full bench. This is going to be a great situation for Takuya. He's just getting going to get a pile of cards, get the Absol where he wants, and or have that... That Dark Rider doing anything he needs right now. The Absol currently deals 100 damage uh, with, with something like a Dark Claw, which it's not going to be attacking with uh, right now. It could deal 120. So that's, that's a lot of damage out of the blue. And that's why I really like Absol. And that's why I hate filling my bench up against uh, a Dark Rider deck if, if I can help it. You just never know if it's the right play. You don't want to be drawing those same cards over and over with those hand refreshers, but you don't want to be putting stuff out on the bench for your opponent to use as a resource with Absol and with Catcher. Yes, now. Your Colrus. Yeah, with, without a Trubbish in play and without a real way to slow down your opponent's Blastoise deck, you have to be thinking that Takuya is, he's got his back against the wall. He's down a game. His opponent's got pretty much everything he needs, with the exception of a Black Hiram. And I'm just not feeling very good if I'm, if, if I'm Takuya. I, I need the Garbodor. That's, that's the reason I play this Garbodor is for this matchup. Right, but he just Ultra Balled and got another Darkrai. That would be uh, his fourth one in play if he could put it in play. Right, his bench is full at this point. Let's take a look at Absol so that we can see this card that we've been talking about so much. But it looks like he's just going to pile up some damage on that Keldeo and then put some more on the other bench Keldeo. Yeah, that's kind of what I was talking about. The last game was a game of Haymakers. This time they're kind of like just cat fighting with each other, slapping each other around a little bit, and not, really, not really landing these finishing blows. Well, even even early on in that last game, it wasn't so much that, like knockouts and attacking happening. It was just these crazy setups that were completely shutting down the other side. I believe James might have had a superior energy retrieval. I'm not 100% sure, but he was debating. I, he might have been debating between the energy retrieval or the juniper. He went with a new hand of seven cards. It's never a bad choice. Right, and there's that Absol on screen that you can all see, and that Mind Jack attack is the attack that we're talking about, that the more Pokemon your opponent has on their bench, the worse it gets for him. Yeah, now we see, I believe, at only one water energy, uh, potentially two. Um, you want to start seeing the energies. You want to start being able to deal heavy damage with your Blastoise deck, and you just you don't want to deal 110. As, as big as 110 damage is, it's just not enough to one-shot your opponent's Pokemon. So this game, it could be anybody's, honestly. Uh, the Keldeo is likely going to attack here. Uh, I don't see your opponent... I don't, I don't see um, him retreating and maybe attacking with a bench Keldeo. At this point, you really just want to trade two for two. And 
and take out your opponent's first Dark Rite with the Dark Claw on it, get rid of that for good, and right. then have your Keldeo get knocked out and just kind of take that prize exchange. It might not be the best situation, but it's kind of, it's not a great situation, but it's the best option of the one he has right now. Yeah, with, uh, with 12 damage counters on him, he's only got about 50, 50 hit points left, and... The, ooh. ooh. Okay, so we see a Pokemon catcher on... Okay, so we see a Pokemon catcher onto the bench Keldeo with, only, with three damage counters on it. Heads on a Hypnotoxic Laser doesn't mean too much, but a Nen and a Dark Claw on the bench Dark Rye, that's quite a bit of damage right. that's going to be able to come into play. He as accidentally as flipped as up exactly the card he's looking for, trying to hit that uh, Verbank Gym. Exactly. Your opponent's Tropical Beach is nice and all, but you really want to get the Verbank Gym and get the Poison to deal as much damage as possible to your opponent. So Poison, Verbank Gym, and a Dark Claw-empowered Dark Spear, is that going to be enough to knock out Keldeo EX this we, we saw the Oh, Burbank. there it is. The Verbank does come into play. He game it, over. Game over. Going down to the third game. He yep. fist pumps. He's so excited because that Burbank got him the last four prizes. He exactly. Did. He did the math. He was running it all up and got everything he needed. Yeah, I was really, <laughs> I was really dreading having to deal the the combat, the, the damage, um, on on stream because trust me, it's it's a lot harder than it looks to do this with uh, with all eyes on you. Right. So it looks like they're moving into the third and final game. Uh, they'll be having a, they're shuffling up. They'll be preparing their cards, and it's just been a really interesting games. That those two games for two decks uh, playing the same decks playing against each other. Those games, those games almost couldn't have been more different. Yeah. Now. I want to stress just how important this Burbank City Gym was. The ability to deal, or forget about the ability. The, he needed to deal this much damage. He needed to hit that Burbank. He had four cards to hit because he, the end only fashion four cards. He had two Burbanks in his deck. Nailed it. Yep. Just like that. It, Nailed my ear too. Exactly. It can, it, can, it can make all the difference when you're playing cards like that. That, that Burbank City Gym has such the combo impact with the Hypnotoxic Laser. And he knew that that was his best chance to end this game now. And that's what he needed to do was end the game now because he was not going to be able to get his Garbatoxin set up. Clearly, he, is, he had decided that that was going to be too long and was going to be too far gone to actually help him. So he needed to end that game now. So he took kind of a gambit there, played the Hypnotoxic Laser and hoped that he found the Burbank. Yeah, that's a gambit that you kind of needed to take anyways. So I like I liked what he did. I like that, um, that, that risk, and it paid off. And now we're going to game three. Now it's going to be the Takuya that's going to go second. James is going to go first. Right. James has the slower deck, but going first definitely helps quite a bit. You need to be able to, t you need to be able to deluge before your opponent's Garbodor can really take effect. So if you get a couple of Squirtles in the play on your first turn, your opponent gets a couple of Trubbishes. You get a delusion plague. Maybe get a couple en few energies on your Kirim, few energies on your uh, black, uh, your uh, your Keldeo and your Kirim. That's that's really all you need. Your opponent can get a, a Garbodor in play, and you'll be able to handle it, probably. Right. So. Given that this game is set up the way that it is, and it's probably going to be end up, it may end up being called on time here before too long. Got, time has got to be taken away. Yeah, let's hope not, because I really do want to see a third game here. Exactly, but do you think that Takuya has to push for Garbatoxin to try to shut down James's best chance for his early game? Absolutely. That's that, got to be Takuya's plays. He's got to go for the Garbatoxin. Absolutely. If you can get a Garb if you can get a Garbador in play with that with that tool before your opponent gets a Blastoise in play, let's say your opponent has one energy on his on his uh, black here, you you get a you get a um, the Garbador in play. What's your opponent going to really do? Right. He, he has no choice but to just sit there and attach manually turn after turn. And so even though it's a fast a game, damage. Takuya may need to like forego early knockouts just to get that Garbatoxin going. And it looks like the game is is going, so we can bring that up on screen. No mulligans from either player. They're getting the prizes set up. Yeah, there's there's no need to to truly try to outrace them currently. I don't think. I, I'm not 100% sure on how much time is left. But if I'm Takuya, I'm thinking, Garbador and play first. Let's let's make sure this happens. After that, all right, let's 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 start taking our prizes. Let's start night spearing away. All right, Takuya's got no, no trubbish at this point, And there's a Garbador up front, his biggest HP soak. Yeah, now the Tropical Beach does come into play on turn one. That's exactly what James wants to do. He wants to lower his hand size as much as possible, maybe Ultra Ball for, um, for something like a Squirtle, and then just draw as many cards as possible to maximize his odds of getting a turn two uh, black Blastoise. Right, depending on the energy he's got in hand, he could maybe even try to pull off some maneuver with a super early uh, Black Ballista. James is looking through his deck. Uh, that's something that most people want to do on their first turn in order to take a look at what's prized, see what options you're not going to have for the rest of the game. Now, interestingly enough, Ultra Bolton got rid of two water energy, so that signals that he's not ready to Blastoise this turn, which he can't because of the restrictions on Rare Candy, but it also means he's probably going to play either a Juniper or an N, so that's something Takuya needs to be aware of. Well, remember that he's also got the Tropical Beach to refill his hand. Right. But 
I think it's nice to get a couple water energies in your discard pile because that's exactly where you want them to be for your superior energy retrieval. Anyways. Right. Suddenly makes that card live where it wouldn't be where until normally later in the game. Yeah, exactly. So he also attaches a water energy onto his Kirim because why not? Five cards, I believe. Maybe even six. <laughs> we'll wait and see. Six cards off of that tropical beach. That's that's basically a new end. Right. Got the Dark Claw on the Dark Cry. Oh, and no energy. Yeah, Dark Cry. Uh, Dark Cry with a Dark Claw didn't end. That's <laughs> that's definitely not an exciting turn by Takuya, but right. uh, he does have a chance at finding these uh, these troubleshoots as soon as possible. And at least he gets his opponent's hand down, hand size down to six instead of seven. Right. It actually has a negative impact on James's hand, which is pretty hard to do with a full six card end this early in the game. Exactly. So. Um, I do want to see a more exciting turn out of Takuya. He does have a Sableye active, which is pretty nice because if you get the Ultra Ball away some cards or something, you might be able to Junk Hunt, but he doesn't even do that. He only attaches a, uh, an energy from his hand onto his bench Darkrai. Right. Trubbish into play means quite a bit. It forces your opponent into a, a much tougher spot, and now we see a Tropical Beach right. after attaching a tool to the Trubbish. Right, he's kind of doing a little all-in on that Trubbish thing that, you know, if you've got a chance to catch it up and take it out, you can do that right now, but you're going to have to pull out your full combo as well. He catches it up anyway. Let's see if he's got the combo to pull off this. I see a rare candy in his hand, which is important. I need to see a blast was here. I see a, a computer search. It could happen. It really could happen here. Well, he, I don't think he has the cards, though. There's a coal risk. There's, there's an end. There's, there's, there's hope. Right. There's he he, he hope. can play for it. He, can, he doesn't have it on hand right now, but he can go in, find that Blastoise, candy it up, and then go for a new hand and see if he can pull the Miracle Shot out. Yeah, the computer search immediately finds that Blastoise that was hiding in the bottom of the deck. Right, and he doesn't bother to shuffle yeah. fully because he's going to immediately play that Lightning Energy and end. So if he can find two Water Energy uh, on this draw, he's going to be able to take out that Trebuchet right away, and that all-in play from Takuya is probably going to pay off poorly for him. Yeah, the nerves have got to be getting to both of them here. We, we do have two Water Energies in the discard pile for James, so a Superior Energy Retrieval would also be good. Two Waters, a Superior Energy Retrieval. There's, there's plenty of, uh, of opportunities here for James to really take the lead and... Uh, Almost cement it, really, because that would be a really strong start. Can right, and it's and he has no chance. To One then water has and an energy search. We do see it. Yep. We're going to see that trouble get knocked out this turn. Yep. I believe. <laughs> well, he also has to take into account that that's going to be him discarding a ton of energy, and he already has two in the discard pile, which is really going to kind of, like, neuter his ability going forward because he's not going to be drawing as much energy if he black ballistas this turn. Oh, but he doesn't even need to blacklist it. He has actually has Slash. Oh, that's true. So that true. is the end of Trubbish. We are now seeing James Good take control of the game for right. the first time. Let's bring Black Ballista up to talk about that second attack. Most people think that Black Kiram EX only has that Black Ballista attack, but Slash is so important too because for these smaller Pokemon, it's still a one-hit knockout without needing to discard those energy, which allows him to maintain his board state. Yeah, it's so easy to forget that. I mean, you even called it the second attack, when in reality it's the first attack. That's how easy it is to forget that, that uh, Kirim can actually attack for much less damage if, if it needs to. Tails on Hypnotoxic Laser matters, but not quite as much, because you don't have a, a Garbodor to really cement your, uh, your opponent from rushing in. Although we don't see a Keldeo on James's side yet. No, we currently don't. But, but uh, it could have potentially slowed down like he did in that earlier game, preventing those Black Ballistas from actually coming out. Yeah, honestly, all, all these Blastoise decks tend to play like two to three Keldeos at least. So we're going to see a Keldeo if, if James doesn't get unlucky. Yeah, and no, there's that Slash attack. We don't need doesn't even need to be any specific energy. It's an all-colorless attack. Does 60 damage. Nothing fancy, but does the job against those Trubbish. Yeah, now uh, the, the Black Kyrum did do that, uh, that 60 damage with, uh, with the Slash, and you cemented the lead. However... Junk Hunt might have to be uh, Takuya's way out here. Right. He's got to be playing for kind of a longer game than he might have initially been hoping for. Remember, we said that he was going to try to do that full throttle, get to the Garbodor, and get the Garbotoxin alive. But that plan didn't play off, so now he's got to play a different game. Yeah, now the energy search finally got played because now he actually might need to attack with the Black Ballista. And I believe we see a Skylight now. Right. He's probably going to go for a catcher so he can get something worthy of that Black Ballista. Yeah, this does not look good for Takuya. Yeah, no more energy are going to be in play at the end of um, at the end of Takuya's turn. Well, he does have that EXP share. Yeah, okay, fine. One more energy. One, one energy is going to be in play at the end of uh, James's turn. And really, as long as he plays the catcher and doesn't forget to, I am going to be very surprised if James Yeah, this J game. James has got a really solid hand on this one. Black Ballista knocks out that dark ride. James is down to three prizes. Your opponent only has a single energy in play. 
and no Garbodor in sight. Yeah, like Takuya could pull some some pretty impressive things here, but I'm not exactly sure what we're looking for. He's going to dark patch another energy onto that dark ray. Every dark patch is so much more important now than it, than it, than it's ever been before. The the Keldeo with the Floatstone is pretty nice, I will admit, but every dark patch is really important because he really needs to start catching up with these. Oh, well, he hypnotoxic, even though it was already poisoned, just trying to get the sleep to again shut down those black ballistas. He does get the Verbank City Gym in play. So uh, Black Yumi X, 180 HP. He's got a long way to go before he knocks that Pokemon out, but he's doing everything he can to make an effort there. Yeah, no, uh, no more tropical beaches in play. Now remember, Sableye does not have an energy on it, so we cannot retreat for free. But Keldeo can rush in and, and allow it to. Uh, to retreat for free with the floodstone. So right. We will likely see a night here. The Ultra Ball should fetch another Dark right here and really start giving. Oh, oh, oh he's going to try the backup Garbodor plan. Okay, so he's going to be he's going to be trying to hope his opponent doesn't knock out this uh, this rubbish. If his opponent doesn't, then he might he might be able to get some sort of a comeback here. Right. He's hoping that James has expended all his resources that he's got active right now, slowing him down enough that he cannot black ballista on this next turn so that the Darkrai can deal some damage and hopefully go for the knockout on the next turn, you know, building that up and starting to take out those uh, Blastoise. Yeah, EXP sure mean, mean, uh, meant that he could not get a Dark Claw onto it. Right. So we're, we're seeing a measly 90 damage out of Night Spear. Right, but then he's got that bonus damage from the Verbank City Gym, and his only option for that Night Spear bench damage is going to be that Blastoise. Exactly. So since Squirtle, yeah, exactly, since Squirtle does have the ability. So now James looking to knock out the Dark Rai, but also looking to avoid getting the poison knockout uh, at the end of his own turn. Right. Or actually it wouldn't be, so he's, as he's only got 14, uh, uh, 14 counters on him. Right, but he just played a Salon, so that's going to get him all the water energy he needs. But at this point, there's no way for Black Kyrim to get out of that active position, so he may end up being knocked out, and if he doesn't have another Pokemon to attack with... Are these the actual last three energies left in his deck? I it could be. be. Yeah. So it's all down to superior energy retrieval at this point. Knocking down the Darkrai would be nice. Knocking, knocking out the um, Trubbish would also be nice. I don't think he, he truly cares at this point. He just needs to start getting knockouts and, and hope his opponent kind of stutters. Right. He's so, close to, he's so close to the win at this point just on prizes anyway. Oh, looks like he's playing an Ultra Ball. That might be for a Keldeo at this point, just so that he has another attacker if he needs it. Oh, he did have another Water Energy. Um, yeah, really, if you, cannot, if you can no longer Deluge at the end of your opponent's uh, turn, say your opponent gets a uh, Garbodor in play and starts saying, well, let's start this comeback trail, you, can, you can't Deluge, so your opponent has a lot of control. And even though you're going to be at one prize, that does not mean the game is over. That does not mean that, that, uh, that James Good is going to be ending Takuya's run. No, absolutely not. You need to get rid of this, uh, this rubbish before, before it locks you out of the game. And interestingly enough, James goes for another Blastoise. So still uh, putting all his hopes and dreams on that uh, Black Urim, it looks like. Yeah, well, th that also matters because if your opponent, say your opponent doesn't have access to... Um, oh, he's got a Keldeo in his hand. Yeah, th say your opponent doesn't have access to, to knocking out the Trubbish or whatever. Right. Then your, your next best bet is going to be to knock out the, the, the Blastoise with, with the Pokemon Catcher. Right. But he, redu he takes away that option here. Right. Now, Black Urim is definitely going to be knocked out in between turns here. Um, yeah. uh, James, I believe, is... You may be. Oh. He's lasering, but it doesn't truly matter. Right, he's probably lasering just to get the card out of his hand. Yeah. Because um, he's going to Juniper here. And <laughs> Black Kyrm's going to be knocked out regardless. Takuya that. Yeah, I don't think Takuya real, realized that, uh, that he didn't need the laser, anyways, but it's fine. Well, he's it getting matter. rid of it because he's going to Juniper here. But I think James may be like hiding the fact. I believe he's got a Keldeo in his hand. I can't quite tell, but I think he's got a full art Keldeo in his hand. And so he's having to Takuya like play around that fact that he might not have another attacker in play and so he's kind of giving him some different hope to play to alter the way he's currently playing his hand out yeah now remember he is going to be um even though he is at a one card or a one prize position your opponent's ends get that much stronger your opponent is going to be able to take away a lot of your options james is in a good spot but not the best and you can definitely lose from here does the garbador have a tool yeah i believe it does right that garbador does not have a tool well, without a tool, that makes it that much more difficult. Oh. Super energy retrieval. Is yep. that the game? It could be. It is indeed. Yeah, because that Blastoise will be able to use its own attack. That's it? Yep. Sh shaking of the hand, that is it. James Good wins and goes on to the top four of the Pokemon TCG World Championships. Takuya's undefeated reign here at 2013 World Championships finally comes to an end. James Good takes him down, and he's going to be moving on to the top four. Now, 
even though Takuya did lose, you have to remember, he was undefeated coming into here. He was, he, he won, he grinded in through the LCQ. He had an incredible run, and this is a, honestly a run for the history books. It is. It, my, I, I can't think of a run that's gone this deep off of the LCQ that I can remember in quite a while. I know uh, four years ago we had a player make, I believe, top 32 out of the grinder. This may be the deepest. We've had two grinder players go this far. Um, we're going to be bringing up James for an interview here any minute with my good friend Josue. And we'll be seeing that uh, going on here real soon. And now we're going to, uh, we'll just like kind of wrap this up. Uh, James, we might be able, if we can bring up the bracket from before, uh, we might see who James's potential opponents are for next round. Correct. Now, James, James is having an incredible run. Now, I, I do wish I could say more about Takuya's undefeated run, but... Okay, now the, the bracket is not updated. Right. These are top eight competitors. James Good is the first player that we know of that is moving on to the top four. Right, and James is going to play against either Simon or Johnny, and they have very similar decks, so it's almost not going to depend that much. It, yeah, it's not going to depend that much which opponent he's going to play from a deck point of view, but really just from their moxie. We're going to kick it off to a quick break. And we'll be back with that interview with James. All right, I am Josue Crimson Rohano here with our top four competitor, James Good from the United States. How's it going, James? Uh, it's been a very long day, but I'm uh, very happy to be here, obviously, and this is insane. Yeah, I can't, I'm, I'm telling you, I was sitting here spectating your games, and all three games were very close. They were very back and forth. Game one especially was very back and forth. That one was just a nail biter all the way across, all the way down. And I just, I would have hated to be in your shoes. I would have hated to be, you know, just feeling those jitters back and forth. How did you feel? Um, well, when you're on the stage, it doesn't feel like you're playing Pokemon. You really have to think things through. It's just a whole different atmosphere. Uh, there's not a lot of pressure. I don't feel pressure. But the biggest problem I had was just it's a different culture. Like, you play all day long, and then they put you on a stage in front of lights in front of your friends, and you can't misplay. Um, <laughs> the biggest thing for me, I guess, to say was just making sure I was looking through my deck, remembering what was in there. Uh, the most important thing in that matchup was I was just always looking for the tool scrapper and how many catchers I had, basically. Exactly. That tool scrapper ended up being quite a big role player. Yeah. Um, I thought about it, and uh, I expected a lot of Gothitelle, which is why I chose uh, Blastoise. And then I thought Garbodor might be a pretty big play for the Japanese um, and just Asia in general. They like to play a lot of control decks for, based off what I've heard. Exactly. So I decided to go a little bit low on my energy count so uh, I could fit in the scrapper, but I play the Salon or the Silent. Did you feel like this was going to be a really bad match before you coming into it? Um, or good? I heard that he ran a really thin Garbodor line, so I thought if I can get one or two Garbodors down, hopefully he would prize you know, either a Trubbish or a Garbodor, so I wouldn't have to worry about that too much. Um, one thing I forgot in Game 2 and Game 1 was that I shouldn't be benching as many Keldeos, and I remember in Game 1, or well, Game 2, I, I uh, Ultra Balled one of my Black Kyrams, and I was like, why did I do that? Yeah, that, that like, actually ended up being quite a big uh, difference maker in that game. Yeah, the math just doesn't add up, add up with Black Kyram. They have to like claw up the Sableye and hit it once. Exactly. Now, you did it. You pulled it off. This, uh, this, this matchup definitely wasn't easy. We'll, we'll, we'll say that. 
you're looking forward to the top four. I don't know if you know who your opponent is. I personally don't know who your opponent is, but you've got to be looking forward to that, and you've got to be looking forward to potentially being the winner, the champion. Um, so I've always said that if I put my mind to it and if I work hard enough, I can do anything. And I know that this is my rookie year, and I know it's been an insane rookie year all year round. But I believe that no matter how much experience everybody else in the field has, I have heart, and I just believe that it doesn't matter how long you've been here. I, this might be my rookie year, but rookies can do great things, and I believe I can win this championship. Your heart definitely showed throughout the match. You, you, you said it yourself, you, you were afraid of misplaying, and, and you definitely didn't. I'm sure you were probably sitting there ultra balling going, please don't misplay, please don't misplay, please don't misplay. But what mattered is you, uh, you pulled it off, you, you played extremely well. You're, you're in your rookie year, I'm sure you're looking forward to the future years of, play, of playing Pokemon. Oh yeah, it's just incredible knowing that next year I already have my invite, so I can take it a little easy if I want. I, I believe I have my invite, I don't, I don't even know how the prizes work. <laughs> well, let's I'm just terrible. hope you do. Um, but, Oh, yeah. sorry. No, continue. But I mean, I'm out here, you know, I'm representing my team, Team Ducklet Dynasty, as we call it, and also Team Swag. All right, all and, right. And uh, just representing for Seattle, and we're up here in beautiful Vancouver, and I'm just trying to bring it back to the West Coast. Congratulations to, I guess, all of Seattle, all of Team Ducklet, and all of Team Swag. Um, James, honestly, I don't have very much else to tell you other than good luck, and I really do hope to see you uh, here for future interviews. It's, it's been an incredible run, and actually, you were supposed to play the top four match tonight, mm -hmm. but turns out we're going to play it tomorrow. Oh, cool. So, uh, yeah, it's only midnight. You, you know, get a no good night's sleeping. <laughs> Are you kidding? <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, man. Well, thanks a lot. I really do enjoy it. Uh, I did enjoy watching your games, and I'm just excited to, uh, to see what's coming from, from you next. Uh, your, great, your, your... great things are going to happen. I didn't come this far to lose. All right. Well, I believe that's going to be it for us. We're going to be closing out the show for the night, and we are going to be seeing you guys tomorrow afternoon, to my knowledge. Trying to get that on. correct. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> tomorrow at 8.45 a.m. apparently. Hmm. But uh, the, the stream might not start until, until, a few, uh, until a few hours later. We'll definitely keep you guys up to date with that. Um, but actually, okay, what we're going to be doing is the stream is going to start tomorrow at 8.45 in the morning. We hope to see you guys all back here at 8.45 in the morning here in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. Thank you very much for watching, guys. I cannot tell you guys how, how excited we are to have seen you guys all uh, here with us at, in this tournament and watching us throughout the stream, watching us here in Vancouver. It's going to be an exciting day tomorrow, I can guarantee you that much. Uh, I don't know if we're going to be going to some closing... Uh, to all right, guys, I guess that is going to be it. Thank you all very much for watching.